Now I'm just going to be using two tools, plastic trim remover and a screwdriver. You don't really need the plastic trim remover, it just helps. If you have it, stick it between the trim and the dash and kind of pop it out. With your fingers, you can then just kind of squeeze it and kind of pop it out. It's just held on by metal clips though, so it just pop right out. Now once it's popped out, you want to remove the center button that controls the hazard and the door locks. Just push down the little metal tabs and push out and it should just pop right off. And then just unplug it. Then get your screwdriver and you go on to remove two screws that hold on the center bezel. Thing is, I got when we're taking this out, it's like snapped in. So I hope I can do it for you. And the same as the center trim, this one's also held on by metal clips that just snaps right in. So you're gonna have to just pull it out. The center one's always been a little bit more stubborn, so it's gonna take a little bit more pull. Once you pop it out, we're going to want to unplug the AC controls. These are really easy. On the blue one, little thing you have to push down and slide over the locking clip. And it pops right out. Same as this one. Push down, slide it over, comes out. On this one, the top and bottom you have to pinch down and kind of wiggle it out. Bezel out. Now you have to unscrew the end mask or the CCC. If you have the end mask, it's only going to have two top screws. I have the CCC, so I'm going to have to remove four screws. I'm going to have to turn the car on so, to move this thing back. Just keep focus on here and then I'm gonna go to the other side. Right. Or I could always edit it later, but. Now I'm gonna go to the driver's side so I can move back the shift lever to drive so that I have more room to remove the end mask or the CCC unit. Just make sure as a precaution the emergency brakes are on and the back wheels are chugged, just in case. When you slide it out, you're going to want to locate the harness. The harness is also held on by locking clip. That one you just push down and you just slide it and it should come right off. Now we want to find the connector that we're going to be installing the auxiliary cable. It's that top connector to the left, that gray colored one. That's where we're going to install the pins. To remove from the main harness, you push down a little button and slides off as well with this one. A little clip, push down with your fingernail and then slide it and it comes out of that connector. Now you're ready to install the pins. Now I have already routed my auxiliary cable from the back of the, the unit to my glove box. So it was already there. Depending on where you're going to install it, you just make it lead back to the back of the unit so you can put the clips in. I'm going to plug our auxiliary pins into. It's going to be labeled 1 through 12, but it's not going to be 1, 2, 3. It's going to say one on one side, six on the other side, seven on one side, and 12 on the other. 
You just have to count down on the pins to see which one you're going to put it into. It doesn't matter which color you put in first. In the video, I'm going to put in the red one first. That one's going to go into pin number seven. So count down, slide it in, and when you hear the click, it's locked in place. The next one I'm going to install is going to be the green one, which is the ground. That one's going to go into pin number eight. With the other one, slide it in. When you hear the click, it's locked in place. The last one's going to be the white one, which is the left. And like the other one, you just slide it in, wait for the click, and it's locked in place. It's already pre-wired like this? Yeah. Dash, easy. Well, I pre-wired it. And once you got the clips all in, find the connector again and slide it back into place so that you can install it back into the harness and you're ready to go. Now just reverse everything you did to take it out. Everything should just be the same as putting it back in. Now my car has already been pre-coated, so my auxiliary is already gonna be my iDrive. You're gonna have to have the car coated for the auxiliary cable to work. I'm also using an iPod cable that turns it into a 3.5 jack that I connected to my auxiliary cable. But you can use any auxiliary cable to connect to this cable I installed. Take. Uh, that was 10 minutes. Stop.